Welcome to Building the Future. I'm your host, Kevin Horick. You can check out new episodes of the show every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. If you missed an episode or want to get more information about the show, please visit buildingthefutureshow.com. Season 1 of the TV version of Building the Future is now streaming online at buildingthefutureshow.com. Welcome back to the show. Today we have the team at Fund This. Guys, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, guys, I'm excited to have you guys on the show. I, I know we kind of ran into each other at uh, the Startup Expo um, months back, and I thought what you guys are doing is is kind of is pretty interesting and, and kind of a different take on um, the you know the the fun self fun kind of your project. But maybe before we kind of get into fun this, let's get to know each one of you a little bit better, and uh, maybe just tell us a bit about who you are and your background. Yeah, sounds good. Hey, I'm David Hartman, uh, co-founder and CTO of uh, Fundus. I've been uh, leading the architecture of the platform and uh, brainstorming the ideas, new features, and the features that really set us apart um, as well as running some of the operations of the company uh, so far. Awesome. And I'll turn it over to uh, Felix. Sure. Hey, so my name is Felix. Um, I'm the current CEO of Fundus. My background is I was actually one of the board members at SubX and other events such as NextGen Summit. And I come more from a business background than from a tech background. So given that I'm also David's brother, um, I recently came in as the CEO to take over operations and, you know, blow this thing up. That's awesome. Uh, I'm I'm Anthony Pereira, and uh, I'm one of the co-founders, along with David Hartman, uh, on this project. Um, we started this project about uh, about a year ago, development. Um, right now, my role is kind of helping fund the growth and uh, some business development. I come from a business background, uh, started a couple of companies, sold a couple of companies, and uh, pretty excited to be on the fund this team. I'm Brian Wood, and uh, on the... Uh Software side, I handle project management for uh, continuous development, and then on the equity side, I'm the acting chief compliance officer. Awesome, great guys. Well, welcome to the show. I'm glad to have all of you. It's it's nice. I've never done four people, but I think I think it's going to be good. Yeah, excited. So, so, kind of walk me through how the idea of fun this kind of came to be, and why you guys decided to start this thing. Yeah, so, I mean, as, as Anthony mentioned about a year ago, or it was actually, I think we started talking more than a year ago, more than a year and a half or so. Um, and, yeah, we were talking about crowdfunding and that there were just a good number of pitfalls that current crowdfunding sites have, and why do they have those? And, yeah, just got to talk more, and, hey, why don't we just make a site that actually fixes those issues, where, in particular, um but there's a lot of difficulties or a lot of difficulties that people are having with crowdfunding. So we came up with extra features or special features on our site that would just make life easy again for uh, people that want to participate in crowdfunding. Sure. So what, what are those um, pain points that you guys are solving? So one of them is that people are pretty confused with crowdfunding or they get lost. They just, don't know enough about it, and they have a lot of questions. Most crowdfunding sites are not very open to help with those, so those people spend tons and tons of time on forums. So one of the things is that we integrated a chat, and we actually made uh, came up with something called product, uh, project coaches okay. that will help someone who wants to set up a project. They are on our staff and on our team, and they will help them to put together a campaign, be it from what's a good marketing angle, what would be good, perks or rewards, what's a good goal, duration, all those questions that people could have, they will actually help them along so that people can, instead of struggling, they can just put together their campaign and focus on marketing it. Okay, so they reach out to you guys, you put them with a member on your team to kind of help them with this stuff. How long before the campaign goes kind of live or does it really depend on how, like, how big the campaign's going to be? So usually say, it, you know, it really depends on the individual. Okay. It can be 
it can be it can be three days, it can be a month. It really depends how ready they are because it's also a question of you know are they selling you know are they trying to launch a new product with it and is the product ready? Um, so since you know since I've been taking over me and my team when we get new clients or when we go search out for new clients because we also oftentimes look for great ideas that didn't succeed on let's say Kickstarter Indiegogo. And we kind of give them the back and we give them the support and, you know, really look at that branding and the marketing to reach bigger crafts to make sure that they do reach their goal. Oh, interesting. Okay. So is there a fee for that or is that free? No, free. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, at least, okay. Go ahead, sorry. Sure. Right. Something we might add in the future as you know, also growing the, the platform right now, it's just run by the team, but something I'm working on is that in the future we can get mm -hmm. some, um, you know, crowdfunding experts to kind of join the platform as consultants. And, you know, when you create a project, you almost get like a menu of, you know, experts that can become your personal project coach. And, you know, you can always get somebody from the team for free, or you can, you know, get somebody that maybe has launched million dollar crowdfunds and they get either a flat or percentage fee. Okay. So what kind of stuff do you guys traditionally help people with? Like, I, I get marketing and kind of branding, but, like, what exactly does that mean? That means everything. I mean, the, the idea in setting up the crowdfunding platform is one thing, but there's so many, you know, crowdfunding uh, projects that have great ideas and great videos and everything, but if it doesn't reach the public, you know, that means, you know, social media marketing, email marketing, uh, maybe some crown stuff as well. So that's something we'll help with. But even further than just, you know, uh, marketing, it's also making the, the site happen in the first place, meaning we have something that we call Easy Perk that makes the whole process of creating a project so much easier because instead of having to, you know, um, on your own, you know, create, I don't know, stickers, thank you cards, T-shirts, and anything else you can come up with, we automate that whole process so that you just upload a design and you put it on a certain item or piece of apparel and we automatically print and ship no matter how many get ordered. Okay, interesting. So how so does that... Actually, Go ahead, sorry. That's actually one of the other major features that we've integrated, um, which Felix just mentioned is the easy perk, where creation and fulfillment of certain of those uh, perks, of a growing selection of uh, perks that we've integrated with, um, are just, as you said, automatically generated and fulfilled for the campaign. There, that's the second big pain point that we wanted to address because a lot of these campaigns, they, let's say, run a campaign, uh, sell some of their prototypes and also some of the swag, um, and at the end of the campaign, they've raised, they met their goal, raised the money, but now they have 200 t-shirts to send out. Now, instead of focusing on, okay, this is what I do, here I have my money, now I can start my business or push my business forward, now they get stuck packaging and shipping out 200 t-shirts, which is, I've, in my family, packaged a lot of things before. It's a quite tedious and laborsome uh, effort and act. So that we wanted to tackle with Easy Perk, where we integrate with various manufacturers to take all the information in, take that all the project creators need to do is they can upload an image and select what sizes and colors and types of shirts or hoodies um, currently we would focus on apparel, um, they want to make available. And then on the user side too, people that want to contribute, they can select, oh, I want the shirt in medium and blue with this logo on there as you know, a reward or thank you for their donation or contribution. Yeah. Because nine times out of 10, probably, these project creators aren't t-shirt or apparel manufacturers. Sure. They're going to, going to source a t-shirt or apparel manufacturers and putting the shirt and putting the shirt in a package, making sure it gets there and delivered properly at the right size and the right color at the right time. It, it's kind of overwhelming for some of these project creators. So, so this easy per concept kind of takes all that and, and, and simplifies the whole process. Right. And not just that, also from a financial perspective, from the get go, you know, easy per tells you if you sell a t-shirt at this price, this is the amount of profit you'll be reaping versus some Kickstarters, you know, there's mm -hmm. horror stories of how they sold a thousand shirts, but the problem is that they priced them at the wrong point and now with shipping and everything, they're losing money rather than making money. Right, no, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so 
Is there any any other things that you guys are doing different than the traditional kind of crowd crowdfunding campaigns? Yeah, yeah. We give um, students and nonprofits we take zero percent fees. Okay. So, uh, with the GoFundMe, it's pretty sad actually. You know, they take about ten percent of what you raise. So, if four million dollars get raised for the Orlando shooting, that means four hundred thousand gets pocketed by GoFundMe. Us, on the other hand, you know, we would take zero percent. So the funds actually go where they're supposed to go. Sure. No, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So then, what is your fee for kind of the other or, that are people that aren't students or nonprofits? That's in, uh, that's pretty standard. We take five percent. Um, that's about the same as Kickstarter. It is yep. the same. It's gotcha. The same okay. And, and then, then, sorry, go ahead. Obviously, for all of them, there's the regular two point nine percent plus thirty cents per transaction uh, right, credit card fee. direct pass through cost. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so when people are just kind of getting back to the merchandise kind of side of things, how do you guys decide which manufacturers you're going to get, say, T-shirts printed from? You guys have a bunch of preferred vendors? Yes. Okay. Uh, we, Sorry, go uh, ahead. I spent a lot of time looking for someone that, um, that the biggest thing is that we could find someone that would integrate with us and that we could integrate with them. Okay. Uh, the other major consideration was ratings. Now, crowdfunding uh, through apparel is huge, but again, I mean, as uh, Felix and Dave touched on earlier, when we were researching some of the pain points in crowdfunding um, uh, campaigns like Kickstarter and Indiegogo, it was people not receiving their shirts in time or messed up shirts and, and, and things like that. So. Uh, we spent a lot of time checking uh, different vendors for positive reviews um, and uh, quick uh, delivery times, um, and, uh, and and again price. So price-wise, I don't think you're going to do too much better uh, than you would do through us. And that's you know that's even talking about going through Shopify. So it, it's it's a number of different things, but it's mainly uh, we're trying to make it as painless as possible for the campaign owner. Sure. So are you guys actually shipping the actual merch to um, the backers or is, do you guys kind of have a drop ship place or, or kind of how does that work? Yeah, so actually the integration that we did and the manufacturer that we integrated with, uh, they do the drop shipping um, already. Oh, nice. Meaning in the pay or the price that we show for this is what your easy perk would cost. It includes the, the the shirt, printing off the shirt, and shipping to the address. Okay, very cool. So that everything's really taken care of. And with that, so with Easy Perk, we addressed a couple pain, a couple different pain points. One other one was that usually after a Kickstarter campaign, for example, there's the project creator usually send, has to send out a survey to all the people that just bought some perks or that donated uh, for a perk and need to ask, okay, what size do you want or what color or size, whatever it is, they need to get that information. Because of the integration, we already take care of that. As you contribute for a perk, you select, okay, I want this in medium. And if we give color options, and also I want this in medium and blue. Making it also there very easy that as soon as the campaign is over, that gets sent off to our manufacturer, and the perks can be on their very way, and okay. going to the contributors. So how, making this so, very smooth and fast. So how long does it take from when you send to the manufacturer to the the actual backer to start getting their merchandise? I get depending on where in the world they are, but is it weeks? Is it a month? Do you do you have a rough time estimate? Yeah, it, I've seen them go out within a few days. Oh, so, really? That's yeah. that's really quick. I think practice get them within uh, four or five days. After the project, project. Yeah, after the end of the project, obviously. But sure. Yeah, I mean, from the, the process from the design reaching the facility to that item being printed on demand and then going into a box is, is very, very quick. Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. So I, I'm curious then, so I as a user, I come to your site. Obviously, I sign up for free. I can decide, I, I reach out to you guys, you guys set me up with this campaign and um, you guys, you know, you market it and promote it and whatnot. What happens to you guys once 
the the campaign gets funded are you guys still kind of involved are you kind of are you kind of done at that point or or is is there any kind of future do you work with these companies kind of beyond getting funded yeah so first off um just to, to make clear for the listeners you know like um it is a bit more independent process you know you can open up the process itself you can set up and everything but we're there every step to you know like guys can help you out sure so it's you that have to make the project, you can make it yourself. Um, and you know, for example, now with the new clients we got on, um, you know, I, you know, I'll sit down with them uh, or take pick them, take them on the phone, and you know, walk them through the process of like the marketing aspect. Um, so you know, like the project owner still has to make sure that you know they're pushing it to their um, circles. But on a future side, you know, I think one of the things is funding never really stops. So you know. We'll continue to work um, with the people that put on projects, especially uh, if they're successful. You know, if they're successful, then we'll see what is the next goal we can reach. You know, what is what are some new features that your product might need, or what what what's the version two? And the same way, if the project doesn't succeed, you know, we'll reach out or we'll check and see. You know, what went wrong? What can we do better? Got you. Okay. No, no. The, the equity side. Once the project comes on, say you got a new prototype or something and you want to start to prototype and get the prototype manufactured, and now, you know, you come back to us a year later, eight months later, you got a viable business model, and now you're looking to raise equity, and tell equity the company to raise serious, more money. Yeah. Uh, that's when, you know, our equity side of our business model comes into play. Okay, so do you want to kind of talk a little bit more about that side? Like, I, I get you probably take a different amount or, or negotiate different deals based on what people are looking to do, but... Do you maybe want to kind of elaborate a little bit more on exactly what that means for the people that don't really understand what that means? Well, let's put our chief compliance officer kind of talk about it. Sure. <laughs> um, all right. So for folks who aren't aware of the uh, past few years with respect to the Jobs Act and uh, equity crowdfunding, um, just about a month and a half, it was on May 16th, uh, Title III crowdfunding went live. Now, what that means for um, for seasoned investors isn't a whole lot. Okay, if you're an accredited investor, you've been in the game for several years, and and uh, and you're trading on the exchange. But if <clears throat> say you're an issuer and uh, you're looking to raise up to a million, um, you're looking to get uh, people in your community involved, people who may not necessarily be accredited investors. That's now a possibility for really the first time since uh, just after the Great Depression and those, when those reports were passed. So um, let's say you have a small business, uh, you want to, it's a startup, you want to raise funds to continue on with Anthony's example, uh, you, you have a successful prototype, you want to go into mass manufacture, you need say a million or something like that um, to, uh, to do some marketing and production and so forth. Uh, you can issue a debt or equity, and those securities, um, well, a couple things. One, they cannot be publicly listed, uh, but generally these are pre-revenue companies anyway, so that's not an issue. And uh, you, you, you can list yeah, debt and equity um, and uh, issue these to accredited and unaccredited investors alike. Um, obviously, there are limits on how much an accredited investor and unaccredited investors uh, can put in, but at that million dollar cap, it um, it allows for a nice uh, round figure for uh, for people to raise, like around two grand a piece. Okay. And so, yeah, you can do multiple rounds. What's that? You can do multiple rounds too. Yeah, you can do uh, multiple rounds. Um, you know, and this is and this is sort of one step of a few. In equity crowdfunding, uh, you, have, uh, you, you have different types of rounds that are open to accredited investors also. Um, but this, a lot of people are speculating right now that uh, Title III is going to be the way that, that small businesses are capitalized uh, within the next few years. Sure. No, I, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I, I think the, the thing that I found really interesting about you guys is you almost help them from like the very beginnings to actually having something, whether it's physical or digital or kind of a combo of both, right? Where a lot of crowdfunding platforms 
just offer kind of that like middle piece that they'll put hopefully get you money and then you're kind of on your own before and after. Just sure. Yeah. And the, uh, it, it, it's interesting to talk to uh, a lot of people that we met at Emerge and at some of the other conferences yeah. who had done campaigns elsewhere. Um, so a lot of them have even gone and hired uh, third-party consultants to do things that our project, uh, our project coaches do uh, and still weren't successful because they didn't have much of a roadmap, right? Um, sure. And we try to help folks from from beginning to end, and then carry them through to equity. Uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo, we're looking at equity, the future of that's kind of doubtful. So for now, I mean, it, it's there aren't really a lot of sites who are going to be doing perk and equity and doing it in sort of that holistic fashion and bringing it to that segment of the population who's never even heard of crowdfunding yet, which is a big focus for us. Sure. And, and the other thing, too, is like you guys can help them on the software side, and you, it sounds like you guys have some um, connections into the manufacturing side as well. And where a lot of people don't have that and they don't even really know where to start, right? Absolutely. <laughs> right. Like Tom says, you know, there's, there's some close ties to the civil logic, yeah. which, you know, developed um, funded. So whenever, you know, you know, we can do the whole thing. So if, you know, you raise the funds and you don't know a good developer, you know, you already know the architects of that very platform, you know, can take on your project and like we can connect you to the team that runs it. Sure. No, I, I think that's awesome. So what kind of, t- typically what types of projects have kind of gone through the platform and is there kind of certain areas that you guys seem to get more projects in or is it a little bit kind of all over the map? Well, we are open, and that was intentionally. We are open to all types of projects, okay. and we didn't want to limit um, to, say, for example, Kickstarter limits to only creative or prototype sure. style projects. And on uh, GoFundMe, you have only sort of the, oh, I have some life events, or there's a bigger cost that I'm raising money for, and the fundraiser type, type deals. We wanted to intentionally take the holistic approach to help users that they don't need to figure out, okay, where can I post my project? And maybe if I post on Kickstarter, it'll get shut down or rejected because it doesn't fit with their guidelines. That we wanted to allow people to, yes, we'll take you on and we'll guide you through what's the best type of project. And then we'll feature you in the right places um, on our site or categorize you with others that are like you. And for all that, we started, since you asked, we started to first focus a little more on uh, charitable causes. Okay. Uh, especially in combination with that, we have the fee waiver for the first charitable pro- uh, project that a, a charity uh, posts. So we wanted to first focus on those and, and a little bit on student projects uh, just to get the word out and because those are things where we can sort of give back to the community and just help people to, to raise funds for their causes, be it a personal cause or a bigger charitable cause. Sure. That that makes sense. So do you just need to be in the States or can you be in any other country or are you guys limited by uh, geographics at all? Uh, yeah, no. We allow um, you to sign up from anywhere, not okay. just the States, but anywhere in the world. And we also, the easy perk feature that we mentioned earlier we also ship internationally. Sure, the shipping fee is a bit higher sure. if you ship internationally because right now we only ship from here, from the States. Okay. But if you choose to, to want it to be taken care of, then yeah, you can ship internationally uh, from that, which is also a big pitfall of some other sites where if you have contributors that are from all over the globe, then people would get just just really like bleed out money for shipping if they need to ship internationally some shirt or, or sticker or mug that they were uh, giving out as a perk on their uh, campaign and didn't account for shipping. Sure. No, that makes a lot um, of sense. Yeah. So it's, it's open internationally. Another big, uh, another uh, feature that sets the support that we're working on is actually Bitcoin, that you can make projects that are that want to raise Bitcoin as well as collect Bitcoin, meaning it's a full cycle Bitcoin project. Where instead of using uh, dollars, 
you raise Bitcoin and people can tr contribute Bitcoin. Interesting. And as far as I like last time I checked, nobody else is doing that in the space, correct? Yeah, not really. There's some there's some sites that sort of, but not really, and especially nobody does the combination of the two. Right. Okay. I and got you. I completely understand why. It's, it's a bit of a struggle. Bitcoin is the world for its own, uh, and but it does open up the the crowdfunding space to developing countries where currency is just not stable enough for this to make sense. Or especially in developing countries, they are a big fan of Bitcoin because it's just an alternative. You can move it. You can. It's it's a lot less controlled by the government. Um, so we have, for example, we have. Uh, a contact in Venezuela was a big fan and was really waiting for us to release the feature. Sure. And sure. yeah, it's it's for those uh, places and just for some tech fans, it's it's going to be a cool feature. So you you said you're running into some troubles with in integrating Bitcoin. I'm I'm curious, like what what is the main kind of hurdle with integrating Bitcoin? Uh, the main hurdle is to find a wallet that would actually be good with crowdfunding. Gotcha. So we, uh, so we do a shout out to our two partners. Sure. <laughs> we, so we initially um, integrated, tried to integrate with uh, Coinbase, which is pretty much one of the biggest players in the space. But then earlier this year, there was a um, bit of craziness going on with Bitcoin when the long term like it was pretty stable for quite a while, and then yep. spiked up two forty five to like four seventy eighty or is trading at seven eighty. Yeah, it was yeah. more than that when I was during all the time. Yeah, so there was there was some craziness going on, and they sort of were really busy with that. So we switched to BitPay, uh, and they sort of was like, "Oh, cool, yeah, I like the idea, I like the idea." We finished the integration with them, and then as we were launching and getting our production account approved. Some higher ups in the company were like, you know, crowdfunding seems like not something we want to touch. Oh. But then for Coinbase, who was then like recovered from all the spikes and craziness, and they were also big fans. We talked to them, talked to various people there, uh, but it's right now still under, and it has been for about four months, I think now, under under review, under review by their management team. So we hope to sooner or later hear back from them. They were like we're. Innovation is set, development's actually done. The only part we're waiting for is for approval on a production account that we can actually go live with. Gotcha. But yeah, they met with reviewing for the last four months. Interesting. And you, you guys also have Android and iOS apps. Do you want to maybe kind of cover the features that um, you guys support on, uh, on mobile? Uh, yeah, sure. So... On mobile, the, um, the focus of the initial version of the mobile apps uh, is more focused on, uh, let's say, a viewer-type app. Sure. Meaning, so you house, uh, we have a nice little swipe feature where you get, um, like in a discover-type uh, view, you'll get some projects that is proposed that could be interesting for you, and you can swipe through them. Like Tinder. Like Tinder. Got you. Uh, to get projects, like favorite them or like them, and then you can review them again later, be it on the mobile app or from the site. So we focus there on that the mobile apps focus more on the browsing of the project. Sure, not that so much makes sense. Yeah, because that's something we figured, hey, the app is something if you're somewhere like sit in an airport, wait somewhere, uh, or are on the run, you have, you're have some time on your hands. You just want to flip through some projects. So the focus of the mobile apps was to really facilitate that process. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. So and where, aside, go ahead. Sorry. Aside from the mobile apps, our site is also fully responsive, meaning that if there's any features that are not covered by the mobile apps, you can also just jump in and go to our uh, site and enjoy it on the phone because it's, it's fully responsive. So it looks all good and appropriate on, on any of the mobile devices or tablets. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to know where do you think the future of kind of crowdfunding is going? So one big piece where I think, um, aside from the perk space, I mean, the perks and, and rewards and fundraiser space is pretty well established already. I mean, the, people, like sites like Kickstarter and... GoFundMe has been around for quite some time. 
where it's evolving a lot right now is the equity space. And I think that's a space that's going to evolve a lot more even. I mean, the new regulation, as, as Brian mentioned earlier, May 16th, just another piece of legislation was made public. And I think that's the space where we're going to see a lot of change. And I mean, if you look at what we've just seen in the last six months or a year in changes and new things that have come out, we're really excited to see what else is going to change, especially with the release of the funding portal, the change that was released on the 16th. I think there's a lot of things that are going to happen and make that process easier. Like right now, the funding portal is like it's up to a million and there's still I mean you, you regulations say, with the new funding portal you can you can buy uh, stock and companies using credit cards. I mean I, I think what, what's what's happening is you're creating a, a secondary almost IPO market right. right. for, for startup yeah. IPO right. for startup companies and that's where I think the world's gonna kind of shift. Uh, the barrier to entry to a startup has gotten a lot lot less now. Um, you know to raise a million bucks essentially I mean, obviously, there's still some regulations that have to be taken into consideration for that as far as documentation with the SEC and FINRA and filing your quarterly reports and all that fun stuff as our compliance officer alluded to. But I think as as the the, the sector of the finance industry evolves, it will catch up to technology. I think technology right now is more advanced than the sector allows it to be. Right. So, And I think also, you know, um, my, my background is trading and I think there, you know, with IPOs, there's such a huge buzz about them, and it's such a big deal. Everybody wants to be in from the start, and there's incredible volume spike in the first IPO days. But I think in the future, IPOs, if you could get stock in an IPO, you will probably late in the game. You know, so I think that there will be a big shift towards um, getting into private companies. And it's also almost like a democratization, the liberalization of the whole VC world, you know, it's no longer the few rich guys that are able to invest into these startups. Now, it's, uh, you know, average Americans, you know, blue collar workers that, you know, save some money up and can put money into, um, you know, create ventures. And, and another whole step is that you know, there's a lot of startups that already raised money, but kind of, you know, like under the table, you know, like get some money from mom, get some money from dad, from your uncle, hit up the neighbors. But through those equity crowdfunding sites, it also becomes a lot more transparent, you know, where there's real paperwork behind it, there's real, you know, transparency. So all these deals get, you know, honored. So I think even in that, you know, in the way that money's raised right now, will over the next years greatly transition to uh, the equity crowdfunding space. And to take it a whole step further, I think a lot more companies will wait longer to have their IPO and maybe raise a few more rounds for equity crowdfunding, especially if, they do raise the limits in the coming years. Yeah, no, I, I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious to know, is there, without kind of giving away anything that um, you guys are kind of working on, it's a little secret, like what, what do you guys kind of see the future of kind of fun this is? Like are you guys adding, you know, features or, or something else that you think can make you guys really um, stand apart from the competition in, in the near future? That you want to talk I mean, about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think right now our feature is kind of set apart from our competition uh, a lot. I yeah. think as Fundus, you know, the equity side uh, evolves, I think Fundus is going to be a constantly evolving platform. Um, you know, I, I see us, you know, we're, we're able at this stage in, in the game as a company able to pivot and add new features, I think, faster and easier than other established companies. I, I, would, I would say that's probably pretty a fair statement. You know, but uh, Fundus will always be an evolving concept as well as crowdfunding is, keeps evolving. No, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, that's it. Sorry, I mean, I, I just you know, again, as I, I think I think Fundus right now, as when we set off to do this do this kind of uh, this, this company was to simplify the crowdfunding process both on the equity and per side, and and I think we're we're, we're achieving those goals right now. I think our our Features make the process a lot easier. The barrier to entry for both perk and equity, once equity goes live on our site, is a lot simpler. Um, so that's kind of where we see funness going. Yeah, and we have an exciting roadmap of other features that we've planned that will, yeah, even more simplify or just add on. That it's not just simplify, but there's more things we want to tackle over time to just give a more wholesome approach to the crowdfunding space, be it on the perk side or on the equity side. Schwartz equity crowdfunds are really, really cool. There's a lot of really cool features, you know, that 
people for, that are interested in, you know, in stocks and trading and all that, they might, you know, be able to uh, relate to that. So we want to make it very engaging. And I think one of the keys is also, you know, to not just raise the money, is that, you know, both with Perk and Equity, we believe, you know, continue those relationships to make sure that our company continues succeeding. So whatever tools we can give them to succeed beyond raising the money, that's also something we'll provide. Sure. No, I, I think that's awesome. So we're kind of coming to the end of the show. Maybe let's close the show with kind of, again, mentioning where people can find you guys online and kind of any other social media links you guys want to uh, mention. Sounds good. So um, our website is fontis.com. And furthermore, we have, you know, on Twitter, fontis underscore, font underscore this. Um, I'm launching the Instagram soon with a Facebook page, which is... Huh? Let's, fund this. Let's fund this. And then if you ever have, you know, a direct question to me, you could just hit me up at, at Felix O. Hartman on Twitter. Very active. So I answer every DM and every tweet. So, um, you know, if you want to continue this conversation, I highly invite you to. Perfect. Well, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to be on the show. And I look forward to following your progress. And, uh, you know, thanks again for doing this. You got it. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. We'll talk soon. Take care. Okay. Have Bye. a great day. You too. Bye. Thanks for listening. The music for the show is done by Electric Mantra. You can check them out at electricmantra.com. And keep them for the future. Music.